Hello, this is Domenico again with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at a second scenario of a shift in the supply curve in a model that is uh, at market equilibrium. So let's let's get started. So here we have scenario number two. Oops, let me just get rid of that. My apologies. So here we have scenario number two. All right, and this will say is graph A. And we'll be looking at the market for crude oil. Market for crude oil. We'll be measuring the quantity on the x-axis and the price of crude on the y-axis. Uh, we're using this example um, because since we're going to look at a decrease in supply, a common case study for that is the 1973 oil crisis. Here we had the Organization for Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries proclaiming an oil embargo against nations that they perceived as supporting Israel during the Yom Kippur War. And so these nations collectively decided as a cartel or as an oligopoly, a colluding oligopoly, to reduce the global supply of oil, which resulted in a dramatic increase in price. Um, here we can see that there was a 300% increase in price from $3 a barrel to $12 a barrel. And we can see the impact of that um, right at this point. 1973, price of oil, um, you know, fairly stable. Uh, during the 40s and 50s and 60s. In the 1973 oil crisis, we see dramatic increase in price, and later in 1979. So a decrease in supply um, helps us understand how that price increased by that much. So that's what we're going to illustrate today. So we're going to have our supply curve labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal costs of production. Then we'll have our demand curve labeled D1 equal to our marginal benefit. And the equilibrium at point A is the free market equilibrium establishing a price at P1 and a quantity demanded at Q1. So price is established at P1 and quantity it at Q1. So we're going to remember that where S1 equals D1, an equilibrium price is established at P1, an equilibrium quantity is established at Q1, and we remember that the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded at Q1. In addition, we see that the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit at point A, MC1 equals MB1, Thus, point A is allocatively efficient. We are producing the combination of goods and services desired by society, or producing the amount of crude that's desired by society at that particular price. Um, we talked in the previous video as well that at market equilibrium, where S1 equals D1, uh, which is allocatively efficient, the consumer surplus is at maximum. The distance between what you're willing to pay and what you actually pay is kind of the savings of the consumer. So the consumer surplus is at max. In addition, the producer surplus is maximized. These are their costs of production, the last price they're willing to accept to break even. This is the price they sell it at. So price minus cost is basically their profit margin. Then 1973, we have the oil crisis. Um, the, uh, this colluding cartel, OPEC, decides to restrict the supply of oil, and thus the supply curve shifts in from S1 to S2. Here we have S2 equal to marginal cost of production two. Price is held constant in the short run, so a new equilibrium or kind of short run uh, quantity is established here. And we see that 
the quai supplied has been reduced from Q1 to Q2. So we need to make a note of that. Quai supplied is much less than the quantity demanded at Q1. So here we have excess um, demand. Which basically is another word for shortage. All right, at a price of P1, the quine demand is at point A. But at that price of P1, the quine supplied is at Q2. So there is greater the quantity of demand than the quantity being supplied. So what is that going to do? It's going to start to put upward pressure on price. All right, now we can also notice that at Q2, we should also highlight this, that at Q2, I were to draw a straight line here, at that particular price, we should also note that at a price of P1, we notice that the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal costs of production. All right, so MB, we're touching our demand curve at this quantity. This is the quantity that's being supplied. At that supply, at that quantity supply, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost of production. Thus, since MB is greater than the marginal cost, we have an under allocation of resources. We are producing less than what's desired by society. Okay, so society wants more. They want to consume more, but there's just not enough being su you know, supplied into the market. So what happens? The price begins to rise. So the price begins to rise and it starts to go up to this point. We are at P2. Price is increasing. And because price is increasing, that incentivizes the producer to increase the quantity supplied along their supply curve, their new supply curve. But at that higher price, it reduces the quantity demanded along the demand curve. So we reach a new equilibrium point, A, B, at point C, where a new price is established at P2 and a new quantity is established at Q3. Okay, so we're gonna make a note that at where S2 equals D1, the intersection of S2 equals D1 results in a higher price at P2, it establishes a new quantity at Q3, and at Q3 we notice that the quantity supplied is now equal to the quantity demanded, no longer is the quantity of demand greater than the quantity supplied. And we'll also notice that the marginal cost, the MC2, is now equal to the marginal benefit of MB1, which is allocatively efficient again. So society is satisfied. We've reached this new market equilibrium. All right, so here we see a decrease in supply resulting in excess demand. The excess demand puts upward pressure on price. Price rises. And then we see a reallocation of resources and goods and services to reach the new market equilibrium at point C. So let's go ahead and um, analyze this as we would on a paper exam for the IB. As can be seen, we have a graph, uh, graph A, illustrating the market for crude oil in 1973. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. We have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal cost of production. And we have a downward sloping demand curve labeled D1 equal to our marginal benefit. Where S1 equals D1, we have an equilibrium price established at P1, at point A, an equilibrium quantity established at Q1, where the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded. We should also notice that at point A, the marginal cost, MC1, is equal to marginal benefit, MB1. Thus, this, um, this level of output is allocatively efficient. We're producing a combination 
of resources or goods and services that are desired by society. As a result of the Yom Kippur War, OPEC, uh, as an oil cartel, decides to restrict the supply of oil from S1 to S2. This is a supply shock. In the short run, price for oil will, will be held constant at P1, but at a price of P1, we see that the quantity supplied along the new supply curve at point B is at Q2, and at a price of P1, the quantity demanded at point A is at Q1. Thus, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied, which is excess supply, a shortage has been created. The shortage will start to put upward pressure on price for this scarce resource. Price begins to rise from P1 to P2. And as price rises, the quantity supplied increases from Q2 to Q3, or from point B to point C, while the quantity demanded decreases along the demand curve from point A to C, or from Q1 to Q3. Thus, at point C, a new equilibrium is established where S2 equals D1, providing a new equilibrium price at P2, a new equilibrium quantity at Q3, where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded, and we have achieved allocative efficiency again, where, S, um, where MC2 equals MB1. We want to also highlight that at Q2, before we reach the new equilibrium at point C, that at Q2, the marginal benefit was greater than the marginal cost. There was an underallocation of resources, thus the price mechanism, price rising, reallocated the resource to point C. All right, so uh, that's it. That's another scenario to illustrate market equilibrium, in this case, a decrease in supply, and how we go from equilibrium, point A, then we're out of equilibrium, point B, quantity demanded greater than quantity supplied, marginal benefit greater than marginal cost, and how the price rises, thus reallocates the resource to a new equilibrium at point C. And that's it. Thank you so much. Please. Um, uh, feel free to comment if you have a question, and uh, and that's it. Take care.